they say but we want to find out when it comes to the law and celebrities are there any exemptions does the law even create anything or does the law even recognize any group of individuals known as celebrities or what does the law say this morning i have one of my favorite lawyers on the line with me his name is dennis opon Wiafe esquire uh, good morning council thank you for joining us this morning on yfm good morning then why i just you are doing very well i'm doing very well anyway mm, we thank god and belated birthday as well you should have told us earlier let's see how we form you <laughs> it says next year i'll inform you all right that's fine thank you very much and of course from from your students and from everybody we say um YFM, YFM, 5. well thank you thank, mm. you thank you so this morning this is what we are looking at celebrities and the law first and foremost um we keep saying that everyone is i mean in the face of the law everyone is equal is that really the case that that do our laws actually create anything known as celebrities and do they really have any exemptions when it comes to the law uh, very well um good morning to this my friend right um there is this general perception or notion that when it comes to celebrities they might gain some preference or some privileges mm. when it comes to the law but that is not actually the case as you rightly put all persons are equal before the law so it will be appropriate to have this discussion from the constitutional perspective considering mm -hmm. the 1992 constitution of ghana if you look at article 17 cross 1 of our 1992 constitution it says all persons shall be equal before the law now the question is does the all persons include celebrities Mm -hmm. Generally, if you look at the nature of the 1990 constitution, the answer is yes. Yes. It means that celebrities are all equal before the law. That notwithstanding, the, we have some people under our laws that have some privileges or immunities when it has to do with the laws. And I'll look at that or consider that to discuss that with you appropriately. Mm. But before that, let's look at, or let me explain who a celebrity is in our context of how we understand who a celebrity is. Generally, we can say it's a person who is widely recognized and celebrated for their achievements, talents, or any actions that they do in a particular field. So, the question is because of their talents, because of their achievements, because of how we organize them, should we give them some exceptions or exemptions under the law? If you look at Act 17, Clause 2 of the same constitution, it says, a person shall not be discriminated against on grounds of gender, race, color, ethnic origin, religion, creed, social or economic status. Social or economic status. So what it means is that your social economic status is not necessarily a basis to provide a privilege or immunity as a celebrity. Now, if you go further under 17 plus 3, it defines what is meant by to discriminate, what it means. And in effect, what it's trying to say by the definition is that you cannot give an advantage to a person based on a person's social status, based on a person's creed, based on a person's religion. In the same way, you cannot give an unfair treatment to another person based on a person's disability or a disadvantage that the person has. So it has been looked at or considered in two different ways. Mm. The first angle is that you cannot discriminate against me because of my disability, because of my religion, because of my political opinion. The other aspect, you cannot give me an unfair advantage or same treatment as against the other person. So in effect, we must all be treated equally. Now this Article 17 of the Constitution, both Clause 1, 2, and 3, has been interpreted by the Supreme Court. A case was referred to the Supreme Court in 2010. And in 2010, the Supreme Court got the opportunity to explain or interpret when we say all persons are equal before the law. And what the court said was that it does not necessarily mean that all persons can be treated equally. Now, you know there are some people or there are some offices in Ghana that in order to be effective or 
um, um, want for a better word, to successfully or effectively perform their functions in office, mm -hmm. they must be granted some form of immunity in relation to the law. I'll take my time to give you examples. If you take our president, for example, our president, whilst in office, is granted immunity in respect of one, his office. In respect of his office, what the immunity that is granted is not in relation to his personal liability, but how he performs his functions. When there is any liability or any action to be taken in court, the action should not be instituted against the president personally. What it means is that is the proceedings in court that the president should be part or shouldn't be a party to. But the conduct of the president as a person in the performance of his function shall be challenged. And the law says you can see. And when you are seeing you need to you need to the action against the attorney general. Now, when the president is in office, he is a person. He can be personally liable, whether in a criminal sense or in civil liability. Now, because he's a president, the law says that whilst in office, you shall not prosecute him or sue him for his personal liability. Now, this immunity granted to the president is not absolute because the constitution only postpones his liability, mm -hmm. how he will be made accountable before the law. So, if you look at Article 57, Clause 5, it grants that immunity to the president whilst he's in office. But if you look at 57, Clause 6, it says that when he leaves office, within three years after leaving office, the president, in the, even in that position, that refers to the person as a president. It says a person who leaves mm -hmm. office as a president, within three years after leaving office, shall be made accountable, shall be sued, whether in civil liability, whether in civil proceedings or in criminal proceedings. So what it means is that even those persons who have been granted immunity like the president, it's not even absolute. The mm -hmm. privilege that the president enjoys under the constitution is postponed and when he leaves office in the case while he was a president he committed an offense then because he's the president you know he's prosecuted because of a justification that which has been provided to protect the integrity of his office mm. and when he leaves office if he committed any offense possibly he'll be prosecuted or definitely he'll be prosecuted that notwithstanding, even if you commit offense under Article 69, 69 of the Constitution, it could be a ground for impeachment if it affects the integrity of the office or what have you. Now, if you even also look at members of parliament, now members of parliament under the Constitution, Article 116 plus 1, has also been granted some form of immunity in respect of the performance of their function in a simple way, things that they do in parliament motions that they present in parliament or what have you. Now that immunity granted is in respect of matters that happen in parliament. And it will interest you to know that because members of parliament have been granted immunity, that doesn't mean that if a member of parliament commits a criminal offense, I say murder on the floor of parliament, it doesn't mean that member of parliament will not face the law. That member of parliament could be brought to court to be prosecuted because the immunity granted there should be in relation to parliamentary matters. Mm -hmm. And if you commit murder in parliament, it does not have any immunity or justification under the law. Mm -hmm. You may also take judges. Judges, for example, are granted immunity in the performance of their function. So, in event, if uh, a judge is sitting on a matter and a judge gives a decision, which, in your opinion, um, affects you as a person, affects your life as a person, Article 127, Clause 3, provides immunity to liability of the judge. Now, if you look at all these provisions carefully, the immunity which has been provided is limited to, to some extent, a civil liability, but not a criminal liability. What it means is that even the judge, if he commits an offense, the judge will face the law. Hmm. Even if a judge commits an offense, the judge will face the law. The judge will get before another court will prosecute in a simple sense. Now, some other persons too, who may enjoy immunity under the law are foreign diplomats. Now, foreign, foreign diplomats, if you look at the Diplomatic Relations Act in Ghana, which incorporates the International Convention, grants criminal and civil liability to foreign diplomats in Ghana to the extent that they will not be subjected to a criminal jurisdiction. 
Now, I took my time to give you this exception because all persons are equal before the law. And when the Supreme Court interpreted the Article 17, they came to the effect that because of certain justifications, because of certain reasons, we cannot treat all persons equally. All humans cannot be treated equally. So if you look at the exceptions that I've given you, these exceptions are there for a purpose. And for the exception to be granted, it should be a law that provides that if we're a member of parliament, if we're a president, if we're a judge, we grant you this immunity. So what it means is that we have to ask ourselves, are celebrities granted immunity under the law? Are they granted some privileges under the law? Generally, the answer is no. Because in the first place, celebrity as a state of YFM, YFM, 182.5. The concept celebrity as a social status is not legally recognized. Mm. That is one point. Why is it not legally recognized? Because if you look at the concept of celebrity, it's very subjective. Sometimes you wouldn't even know who certifies someone as a celebrity. <laughs> A person could be a celebrity to me, another person could be a celebrity to you, but not a celebrity to me. If you look at the concept, no certificate is issued. There is no yardstick of who becomes a celebrity. So, legally, that status has not been recognized. For the law to provide immunity or privilege in relation to the law. So, so it, it must be established clearly that until a person finds himself now it will it 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 it, 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 it can be said to some extent that some political figures like the president because of his achievement may be considered as a celebrity now if he's considered a celebrity the immunity granted him is not granted him because he's a celebrity it's granted him because of his office mm. that is why when he leaves office in case he committed any criminal offense, he will, he will face punishment. He will face liability in court. Mm. So it, it might be understood that the concept of celebrity is not recognized legally for the law to provide immunity or privilege to that particular office. It, it's not even an office to, to, to put it in a, in a correct It's way. more it's of a social office. status that's granted by perhaps individuals themselves. That is so. That is so. And it, it's interesting to know that it's the youth that really elevates the status of a celebrity. Someone who just puts um, um, a, a phone before him, a laptop before him, make, an, make a video, make an audio, which is a comedy. It, it gets some views and a person feels like he's famous, he's popular, and therefore it's a celebrity. If you have to provide you an, an immunity, what is the justification of providing the immunity? The immunity granted in the law for persons not facing certain liabilities, not being um, um, liable for certain conduct, to some extent, have justification. Mm. So we need to ask ourselves, if you are a celebrity and you grant this immunity, what is the justification? Interesting. So, not, not too long ago, um, a number of celebrities or some of these popular individuals actually met with the IGP uh, prior to the December fest festivities. And the conversation was like, a few hours they raised the conversation that, I mean, the IGP should at least grant them some, you know, some immunities. They should enjoy some benefits as celebrities because, you know, Christmas events, they'll be moving here and there. So at least, it means that call itself was not even in the right, because, I mean, the, the, the IGB can't even grant those those exemptions. Yeah, that, that is uncalled because the IGP, um, um, to some extent, it's not a law in itself and it's not parliament. And even if the IGP himself commits an offense, the IGP will face the law. <laughs> if the IGP himself commits an offense, the IGP will face the law. Mm. So, is it interesting if you go to some other jurisdictions? I know you, as a journalist, you know that recently Trump was convicted. Yeah. So he's awaiting the sentence. Mm. Who is the celebrity more than Trump? Mm. But he has faced the law. Yeah, that's true. So, until the law provides, the law itself provides some immunity, some privilege from criminal liability. 
Yeah. Whoever you are, you feel the same last time. Even the president of Ghana, if he commits an offense, maybe why is he the president? He will not be prosecuted. But as soon as he leaves office, the criminal proceedings may start if he commits an offense. Interesting. A lot of knowledge being shared with us this morning. If you're just tuning in, I'm speaking to Council Dennis Opon. We are Faye. He is with our being many law firm here in Ahojo. We are talking about celebrities and the law. Um, I, I want us to wrap up, but before we do that, recently there were questions about Kojun Cancer Law Wing. I'm pretty sure you might have heard of an accident. This is an issue that's in front, uh, before the court, so we wouldn't get into the facts of the case. But people say that, oh, um, that accident actually led to the death, allegedly led to the death of a three-year-old boy. And people are saying, oh, because Kojun Cancer Law Wing is a celebrity, and then they call court, crying to the money bill, no? would being a celebrity actually grant you easy access to to bail or bail is available to anybody so far as you're able to post you're able to meet the requirements or uh, people are able to get it because they are celebrities it, are these exceptions very well so um the, the grant of bail under a criminal and other offenses procedure act particular section 96 is discretionary so what it means is that it lies within the discretion of the court to grant or refuse the bill. Okay. Now, that notwithstanding, the grant or refusal of bill has certain conditions that the Criminal Adult Offenses Procedure Act has also specified or outlined. Now, the judge in exercising his discretion will invariably consider those factors in granting or refusing bill. I will not go into the factors. Yeah. Now, one of those factors is, or the main condition is whether the person will appear to stand trial, whether the accused person will appear to stand trial. Now, this, I think um, in, in 2015, the Supreme Court gave a decision because certain offenses were made unbillable. And in those offenses, the court did not have discretion to grant bail. Now, those, the, the Supreme Court declared that, in effect, regardless of the nature of the offense, the court should grant bail. That notwithstanding, the court exercises the discretion in granting or refusing bail by considering the factors. Now, the main factor is whether the accused person was here to stand trial and will not abstain. If you look at for young cancer law when in particular, look at um, I wouldn't say it's a celebrity, it's, 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 it's a non factor. But the point is, if you look at the things that he does in the country, he has businesses here and there, he has shoes here and there, will he abscond? Will he leave the jurisdiction of the court? If the case is fixed, will he say that he will not appear to stand trial? Right I don't think that will be the case. The mm. court will consider that he has a fixed place of abode. I think you have a fixed place of abode. Is he gainfully employed? Does he have men and women of success to in assurance? I think that the court considered all these factors, and the court was satisfied that because maybe for John Cancer Law, when if granted bill, in the judge's opinion, will appear to stand trial, then let me grant for John Cancer bill. So the bill was not granted for John Cancer because he's a celebrity. It's because possibly he satisfied all the requirements for granting bill. Mm. Mm. You get the point. Yes. Now, the interesting aspect of it is that I, I don't know the offense he has been charged. But let's assume he was charged for dangerous driving. Dangerous driving. Now, under the um, the the Road Traffic Act, if we are charged for dangerous driving and it leads to death, there's a possibility or there's a definite of him giving a custodial sentence if you are convicted. Mm. So let's say they take a young cancer through the they are they check for young cancer for dangerous driving. And they take him to the criminal proceedings. And at the end of the day, the court convicts him for doing cancer. It's possible that you be given considered sentence, regardless of the fact that you may see him as a liberty. The law doesn't create any exception for that. Okay. Now, when you say custodial sentence, for the sake of a listener who perhaps doesn't understand, what do you mean by custodial sentence? So, in simple terms, it means that he will be, he will be put in, to prison. Hmm. Will be put to prison it, 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 because I, I I heard it led to death. Thank you, head I heard that the accident led to death of another. Yes, person. it led to the death of a three-year-old boy. Yes, yeah, so I think under dangerous driving, there is a condition there to the effect that if it leads to death, if dangerous driving leads to death, possibly the judge may convict that she's facing a custodial sentence. So no exception will be given because mm. all persons are equal before the law, and the law has not provided solidity. Any immunity in respect of criminal proceedings.
Amazing. This is a lot of insightful conversation. Um, I'd like to thank you very much for making time with us this morning on Rise and Shine. And we are so grateful for everything you share with us. Should we need any other clarification or anything? I'm sure we'll still knock on your doors and then seek for that. Thank you very much for speaking to us this morning, Council Dennis Opon Riafe. You are welcome, man. Have a good day. All right. Have a blessed one, too. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Um, hmm.